Would this be my look? That would be your game of thrones. Other really important items that are easy to find at flea market type events. Jason, you don't need another machete. Uh, you know what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm a big fan of the Ulu. This is a good slicer, and this one right here is very cool because he's got a channel here, a groove, which breaks the suction. So if you've ever been slicing like taters or something in the in the potato sticks to the sticks to the edge of the blade, this breaks that suction and, the, and it'll fall away from it. Pretty cool design. What do you think? Would this be my look? That would be your game with the Yeah. <laughs> really cool sheepskins. Three dollar glass. I always makes me nervous cooking on glass, but they never break. I don't understand it. That's as good of a price as you get. Yeah. Take this hoe off your hands. Oh, Russia. <laughs> the garden implement. <laughs> well, thanks. Thank you. Thanks for the hoe. I am a very frugal individual, and I don't like spending money on things that I will never need. It's easy to spend lots of money in places like this on a lot of supplies, goods, guns, gear, stuff that you'll never ever use. Something that I will use Your hoe. is a good hoe. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just yeah. like it. This is this is a classic. This reminds me of my dad's thermos when I was a kid. The old Stanley thermos. He said it keeps hot things hot and cold things cold. So I was thinking about putting a, uh, a bowl of soup and a nice tea in it. So yeah, my dad worked in the coal mines and he used to have to do some, some vigorous manual labor for a living. And uh, he used to carry a thermos just like that. And uh, I don't know if, apparently he still got it. I don't know if he'd part with it easier. I might have to fight him for it. I'm pretty sure I could take him. <laughs> That's a heck of a vice. Flea markets such as this are a really good places. Some of them are really overpriced, but this is actually a really good one. You can get really good deals on, on your preps, on your preparations, survival supplies, um, all sorts of different things. You can really find some cool stuff. It's a raccoon paddling a birch bark canoe. Hard to beat a five dollar machete. And you can buy a tool handle, it's pretty much ready to go. would need some shaping for $10. And how long would it take you to make that from scratch? Now, I know what you're saying. Jason, you don't need another machete. And you may be right. But this one's pretty cool. I was going to go ahead and replace the handle on this hoe, but I thought, you know what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It seems like it's probably got quite a few years left in it. I'm just going to clean it up and put a fresh coat of oil on it, and it'll be good to go. And I think a lot of you... A lot of you guys watching just like me can appreciate restoring and, and using some of the old tools today we live in a society where we we buy things like these like these for example <laughs> this ryobi tool right here it's very cheap uh it's much cheaper to just buy one and then throw it away when it stops working and get a new one than it is to to fix and repair it which is just unfortunately that's just the society that we live in and sometimes there's not a whole lot you can do about it these days but when it comes to old hand tools like this this hoe or this machete that i picked up these are basically lifetime tools you can use and abuse these things for years and years and years and years pass them on to your grandkids and they'll keep on working for you <laughs> You don't want this to be razor sharp or anything like that, like a knife, but having a keen edge on it, a sharpened edge, is gonna make it cut through roots and stuff a lot easier. And now this head has a little bit of wobble to it, and it's probably not a big deal. It's never really gonna come loose because it's got a, a screw in the backside here, but, but it does bother me a little bit, and the perfectionist in me wants to make sure that's gone. Now, a lot of people will say, hey, just soak it in a bucket of water, and the wood will swell up and it will tighten up a head on, on any kind of tool like this, a wooden handled tool. And that is true, it will work temporarily until the water in the wood evaporates. And then it's gonna make it worse. And it's just gonna get worse and worse and worse. So what I like to do is soak it in some oil at least 
uh, saturate this in oil. I've never done it, but I might try it this time as I might soak it in some used motor oil. Just this part right here, just soak it in there and let that wood swell up because the oil will never go away. It's just gonna stay in there. Now, I know what you're thinking, use motor oil in a garden implement. Maybe not a good idea, but hey, a little diesel oil I think uh, might help the vegetables grow. I don't know. <laughs> I always keep a jug of used motor oil around. You just never know. It's good for all sorts of things. I don't want to stick it too deep, just the head. Yeah, perfect, just like that. So now I'll just leave that in there. Oops, I'll leave that in there for a few minutes. Yeah, maybe a little longer than a few minutes, maybe like 20 minutes. Let that soak in and then take it out, clean it up, and that axe head should be, re or that axe head, sorry, hoe head should be really, really solid. Knocking over stuff. Coolest cat ever. Follows me everywhere. Some people say they're cat people or dog people, you know? Like you can't be both. I'm definitely both. I like cats, they're pretty cool, man. Guess if I had to pick one, it'd probably be dogs, but shh, don't tell. Don't tell her. <laughs> this machete is in actually really good shape for being as old as it is. I think it's from like the 70s. It's a Japanese made Nesco and pretty solid machete. Really seems like good quality steel, but the handle I always like to touch up the handles. A pet peeve of mine is when the scales on the handle come up above the steel. It's a full tang machete, which is excellent. We can see that, how the scales stick out. And if you're not wearing gloves, that is pretty irritating. Those sharp, sharp kind of edges there, but it's pretty easy to get rid of them. These files here, these are super handy. They've got a rounded side like this for contours. One coarse, really coarse rasp right there, and one finer. Same thing on this side, a flat side, flat side, coarse, and a flat side a little bit finer. I use this thing all the time. What do you guys think about old versus new? Do they make them like they used to kind of kind of mentality? Or do you think that you just don't have time for this kind of repair and maintenance? You just go out and buy new ones. Is it, does it make sense? Is it worth your time? You know, I get that. Some situations I get it. It's just, it's just faster and more efficient. It's easier just to go get something really, really quick. And maybe that's at the detriment of you know, society as a whole. I don't know. It's balance, perhaps. That is much better. Smoothed out. You know, it's kind of rough from my, my filing, and I could sand that and make it look prettier, but I'm not really into that. This is going to work really good, and it's not going to wear big, giant blisters on you from those sharp edges of the plastic. Now that's a much more comfortable handle right there. I like this one. It's The scales are bolted on with screws. See that? Really, really sturdy handle, even though it is made of plastic. But I feel like it's probably solid plastic. It's not hollow at all. So that's gonna be nice. And this machete has a pretty keen edge on it already. It's just got a couple of small spots that might need some love. And what I typically do on this section right here is I'll grind this, this part smooth, flat, where it won't be sharp, and I'll wrap it with paracord. But a lot of machetes, they, specifically the South American ones, Central American ones, they'll come not sharpened right here anyway. But uh, so you can wrap duct tape around there, you can wrap paracord like I like to do. But this one's sharpened all the way to the handle, and I might just leave it like that. Leave this one like that. I used to sharpen machetes all the way to the tip. 
this part right here, but I stopped doing that. It's kind of pointless. You'll spend a lot of time getting that sharp, and then the first thing you'll do when you go out and use it is whack a rock in the ground, so it's pretty much pointless. So sharpen to right about here where it starts to curve, and that's pretty much all you really need anyway. That's sharp. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's really sharp. That's hair shaving sharp. I think that'll do. It's way sharper than it needs to be, but it definitely helps when you're slicing through that thin, loose hanging stuff. Now that machete is good to go. Spray a little W on it, like so. I'm just gonna leave that in there until it swells up enough to where that head doesn't wobble at all. But while it's doing that, I think I'm going to go ahead and oil up the handle to make it last a long time. Like I said, <clears throat> this is probably the original handle. This thing is pretty old and it's been just sitting neglected most likely. But a little bit of sandpaper on it and a little bit of boil linseed oil and it's gonna be back in action. It's gonna have a have an, another chance at life. You could probably use used motor oil for the handle as well, but it doesn't dry like the linseed oil would, and it'll probably stay on there and get on your hands and smell bad and you know, be toxic and stuff. So I don't know if I'd recommend that. Scruff's The Survival Cat is waiting for you to hit the thumbs up, aren't you, cat? Hmm? Oh, and leave a comment. Any comment will do. Today's comment, are you a cat or a dog person? Choose wisely. At flea markets and things like that, you can generally buy, at least in my state, you can buy guns and gear and all that kind of stuff too, which is cool, and you can sometimes get good deals on that type of stuff. But the things that I will look out for more than that are, thing, are tools that I'll be using definitely on a regular basis. You know, the guns and gear is cool, but the thing that I'll be using more than anything, especially in a grid down situation after the SHTF, man, you're gonna be using a garden hoe like this a lot. And I use one of these all the time anyway. This is basically a big heavy duty one like this. It's great for gardening, obviously, for farm work, but but it's also basically like a mini mattock and you can move a lot of earth and chop up roots and stuff like that with a tool like this. So I always keep a lookout for things like that. Other really important items that are easy to find at flea market type events are big heavy blankets. Like for example, where I live, I live in the South. It gets cold here in the winter time. I live in the mountains, it gets colder than it does down in the lower lands, but, but it doesn't get that cold. It's not gonna be, you know, sub-zero temperatures for prolonged periods of time. And as long as you've got heavy, warm blankets that, that you can easily find at flea markets, you can stay warm. Even without any source of heat whatsoever, you could turn the furnace off. Let's say you were out of propane, you couldn't get any propane, the electricity was out, whatever it is, however you heat your home. Having warm clothing, jackets and things like that, and, and good solid blankets, sleeping bags and things of that nature, you could stay warm throughout the winter. Metal containers, big pots. So let's say the grid down situation, water supply, water's not flowing or water's contaminated with bacteria of some sort in some situation and you gotta boil your water. Having big stainless steel containers would be really, really helpful. You could generally find, cat, get out of here. <laughs> cat always wants to be in the middle of everything. You could generally find big containers like that for just a few dollars as well. You can find cats and dogs at flea markets too. My dad bought his dog at the flea market. Kitty, seriously. No, kitty. Jeez. <laughs> Gosh. Come on, cat. Get out of here. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'd love to hear what you guys think about flea market shopping in the comment section. It's an excellent place to get tools for one you can usually find pretty solid deals on heirloom type tools that you could pass on to your great grandkids one day. 
but you can also find things the really useful things like just regular hand tools like wrenches and ratchets and sockets and all that stuff you can generally find that kind of stuff sometimes they're wore out beyond being salvageable but but every now and then you can get really really good deals on stuff like that ropes and cordages i've seen all kinds of good stuff like i saw i saw at the flea market yesterday i'm thinking about getting it there's a big foam mat that i can put that i can cut to size and put it in the back of my truck and that could be my mattress that i sleep on it's waterproof and it'll be a really really solid thing to to use when i'm camping out in the back of my truck so i i really do appreciate you guys watching love to hear what you guys think about all that and i cannot wait to see you on the next one I'm Jason Sally with Survival Dispatch, and when disaster strikes, will you be ready? Power outages, natural disasters, economic collapse, and the knowledge, the skills, and equipment necessary to protect your family when it really, really matters. You can gain instant access to our team of survival experts. Stockpiling food, medical necessities, communication plans, proven techniques to help you get home, shelter in place, or bug out safely. Don't leave your family's safety to chance. Visit survivaldispatch.com to get started.